episode 3,335, When Your Food Smiles Back. Moms, it's time to rediscover, rejuvenate, and renew who you are in mind, body, and spirit. Welcome to Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie, the show to help you do just that. Here's your host, certified life coach, personal trainer, and nutritionist, Christiane Wargo. Happy, happy day. It's time to think about you, your body, what you're doing for your well-being when your food smiles back. For those of you who are brand new to Creature Now, welcome to this incredible family. I'm so delighted of your presence. If you already even had the opportunity, you'll want to head on over to CreatureNow.com where you can learn more and sign up for the Kids and Newsletter. They keep it simple strategy, everyday solutions to live, love, and impact. Well, this episode is brought to you by AIM, inspiring connection and community. Well, we are opening up the doors oh so soon to AIM. I don't think it will happen this week, but... I'm going to do all I can to make it happen in the month of March. Yes, March Madness is here. And if you haven't listened to our episodes two days ago, episode three, 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 yes, for the month of three, which is March Madness, yes, it's a fun episode. So I would encourage you to go back and listen to that. You can actually download your thought bracket for March Madness. It's going to be fun. We're going to do something different. You know me. I like to have fun. I like to keep things relevant. And I like to keep things real here. Life is too short. And life is too precious. And when I think about living the life that God intends for us, we've got to take care of the body he gave us. We have one body. One body. And I know I've been working on mine for over a year now. I'm starting to do more things and I'm increasing my muscle mass and working on my bone density. I mean, we got the weight down, not exactly where I want it, by the way, but we've got it to a point where now I can start pushing some other elements in my life, but all in due time, right? Because there is a season for everything. And so I want you to think about your season when it comes to food. You know why? Because spring is almost here. Yes, I know we are getting just a little taste of spring, but then we get those cooler nights. Just a couple nights ago, we were almost at freezing. And I'm like, seriously, seriously, I want to look at the weather map and I want it to be like 50s or higher in the lows and then upper from there, because I'm just done with this cold weather. I'm done with it. And I don't want my plants to freeze. I, my buds, I don't want them to fall off. They're beginning to like open up. And I'm like, oh no, because we might have a couple days of freezing coming up. And so, whoo, you know, you just take a deep breath and you just hope for the best. But we have choices with our body, right? We have choices on what we can do. And we all know the saying, you are what you eat. But have you ever stopped to think about how your body responds to the food you consume? So when your food smiles back, you are eating for your body. Yes, your overall health and well-being can significantly impact your life and how you live it. And I like to think about eating not just from the aspect of the pyramid, right? Where you have to eat your whole grains. Yeah, no, no. I'm just saying right now in this moment, toss it to the side. Seriously. I want you to think about what food does for you, your body. Okay, I'm not talking about your kiddos. I'm not talking about your spouse. I'm not talking about your best friend or your mom. I want you to think about you. What does food do for you? Because I know I splurged a little bit a few days ago. Yes, over the weekend, I did. I ate food I don't normally eat. Yes, some of it was fried, some of it was popped, and some of it was just absolutely yummy. But guess what? The next morning I woke up and I was a little inflamed. I knew I would be. I don't eat like that all the time anymore. I cannot because what happens is my body gains five to six pounds, sometimes seven or eight pounds of inflammation and it goes freak out. Okay, we won't sing that song, but you know what I mean, right? It just goes in this hysterical mode of what have you done? What have you done? And the problem is I used to eat like that, okay, when I was much younger And my body could handle it a little bit, but then I found out, had red flags, you know, peeking up over time. And it was really my body saying, hello, hello, listen to me. And I was ignoring it. I mean, I dealt with the situation. I had my gallbladder removed because I had gallstones that were so painful. And then I had an emergency ERCP. And if you don't know what that is, I hope you're not eating, but they go and they have to scope and they go down your throat And they had to take out an over 13 millimeter gallstone that they had missed. 
And that came less than 30 days. It was about 27, 28 days after I had my gallbladder out. And my surgeon said, when he took out my gallbladder, he goes, at least I knew what I was taking out, but I didn't recognize what I was taking out. I'm like, you did take out the right thing, right? I mean, we've heard those stories too. He did. But he literally told me my gallbladder was unrecognizable. I'm like, well, it's probably because I've been poisoning myself my entire life, not knowing it. We didn't know. My mom didn't know. My dad didn't know. It was nobody's fault. We just didn't know. I was dealing with things that no person should have to deal with. And still to this day, we don't know exactly what goes on in my body. I just know how my body reacts to food. And I have so watched it. And this now over a year, we're coming up to probably 16 months or so. I have been more than diligent. And, and it has been a journey. It's really been over a decade. But now I'm looking at over this you know, past year to 16 months, really drilling down to what my body needs. And so I made a choice over the weekend that I was going to eat a couple things. I didn't like splurge completely, but I had a meal and a snack that was not good for my everyday eating. And so I paid the price. And it's going down now. I'm doing much better, right? The inflammation is coming off, but it takes me about three to four days to rebound from that. Well, if you're always eating from a rebound, do you think your body ever catches up to health? It doesn't. Because it's always trying to rebound, And so then you just keep getting more inflamed and more inflamed and more inflamed. And eventually that's more weight, actual weight. That's not just inflammation. It's actual weight, not not retention of water, just stuff that your body's holding on to those toxins and free radicals, but it's more of the gunk that you don't want your body to have. And so what if you could eat what would really serve your body well so that when you did eat, It's like your food smiles back at you, right? It's not just about filling your stomach, yet I think some of us just do that. And I get it. Sometimes we have to because we're starving and we don't have any time. So we run through the drive-thru, we grab something. Okay, that's fine once in a while, but are you doing that every single day? Let me ask you this. What was the last food you put in your mouth? Was it fruits and vegetables? Oh, wait, maybe something processed in a box or wrapper. Maybe it was something that had a dark wrapper and maybe a little chocolate flavor. Or could you have drunk your calories with that sugary sweet nectar? Mm -hmm. All sounds good, doesn't it? We have to know what we're eating, when we're eating, and why we're eating if we want to impact our overall health. Because my friend, you are what you eat. That is your kiss to keep it simple strategy. You are what you eat. And as much as we don't want to think about it, you have no choice. You have got to look at this whole idea when your food smiles back that says, you know what? When I eat something, oh, my body is happy. If your body, if your tummy sounds like coyotes going off, because that's what mine do. My, my tummy is like, when I eat the wrong thing. And I'm like, oh yeah, here it comes. And I know, I mean, practically instantly within two to five minutes, if my body is like, this is not for you. Now, do I get sick and, you know, have to run to the bathroom? No, I don't have that reaction, but I get really inflamed and my body, it is like I'm sick. It is fighting for its life because it doesn't know what to do. And so I can't eat like that if I want to survive and live the quality of life I want to live. Now, that is, of course, by choice, right? You could sit here and say, well, Christiane, I'm fine with coyotes. Great, great. Enjoy the next few years of your life. Because after that, you're going to be absolutely miserable. You will. And I don't want you to be that way. So I really want you to think about the quality of life you want. But more importantly, how you want your body to respond to the food that you eat. Because wouldn't it be nice to have your food smile back at you, to be like, yeah, this is actually giving my body what it needs. I eat very, very differently now. I'm very strategic in what I put in and how I do it. And some people would say, you have a very limit diet. I do, but I don't. But I make those choices according to what I need. Are you doing that for your body? 
So what does it look like when we want to break down when your food smiles back and, and that whole concept of we want to discover what food best works for your body? Well, number one, be mindful of how you feel. Okay, if you're going to, you know, eat something and all of a sudden you are absolutely, you know, no energy left and you're just on the couch asleep 30 minutes after, probably not a good food to have put in your mouth. So take note of how different foods make you feel after you eat them, right? Are you energized and satisfied? Or do you experience bloating and fatigue? (laughs) Sign me up, man, this weekend. It was like bloating and fatigue. I could tell, but I was like, oh, it's delicious, And I did. I enjoyed it. Now, I can still fit in my clothes. It's not like I'm that big, but I know that it really took a toll on my body. And so now I'm repairing it. Okay. But I'm not going to eat like that for probably like another six weeks or more because I'm just not. Number one, my schedule won't allow it. But number two, my body can't handle it. I know that. I know what's right for me. So paying attention to these signals can help you identify which foods your body thrives on. Nutritionist Mary Smith suggests understanding the connection between what you eat and how you feel is key to eating for your body. Are you being mindful of how you feel? Make note of it. And you can do that in this next one, number two, keep a food journal. So when you keep this food journal, you can also make note of how you feel. And that food journal can be a powerful tool in discovering what works for your body. Jot down what you eat each day and how you feel afterwards. This practice can help you recognize patterns and pinpoint foods that may not agree with you. Now understand this. I've been doing this for a really, really, really long time. We're talking about, oh my goodness, 12, 13, 14 years, like a long time, maybe almost 15 years, but I will say this. Even 15 years ago, I wasn't as good. 20 years ago, I was okay, but I wasn't like I am now. And now I have got it dialed in. And very rarely do I eat something where I don't know how my body is going to respond. And there are still some things to this day I just will not eat. I won't do it. Why? Because I know what my body does. And I'm willing to take some chances on a few things like I did over the weekend But on other things, I know that it's really just death and I just really don't want to go there. And so I don't eat it. It's okay. I find something else that I enjoy or maybe is not as great for my body, but something I can really kind of splurge on for myself. Sarah Johnson, a health coach, says a food journal can provide valuable insights into your unique dietary needs and help you make informed choices. Are you eating the way your body needs you to eat? You'll learn that when you keep a food journal. And so I would really encourage you to, and you don't don't go spend money on a pretty journal. I mean, I guess if you have one, go ahead. But my thing is this, there's no reason to overspend things unless if you've got plenty of money just to throw away. I'm just being honest with you, okay? But I am being practical at the same time. Get a piece of paper, take out your phone, wherever you're going to do the writing. Now, I would really suggest you write it out. Why? Because then you can hold it all in your hand. And there's something about physically holding that that changes everything. It changes your perspective. And you get to look at the foods and say, wow, man, all of this stuff really makes me sick. And then you could even cut it up. You could take out some of the things and like make a jar of foods that don't work and the foods that do work and and compare them. Me, I'm very limited and it's not fair. Because I love so many foods out there. But I also know that there's a time and place. There's a season for everything. And so I can enjoy some foods, not all foods. And I'm finding that it's better that I make homemade foods because happiness is homemade. And it's where I actually control all the ingredients. So with that, yes, come on, do your food journal. You got this. And finally, number three, experiment with different foods. Don't be afraid to step out of your culinary comfort zone, as I like to say, and try new foods. Experiment with a variety of fruits and vegetables, grains and proteins. You will be amazed. Like maybe there are certain breads that don't work for you, but maybe you try a different one. So don't go buy like 20 pounds of one bread, right? Go and buy a little bit, or maybe you have a friend who eats differently. Ask them, can I just have a piece of your bread? I just want a piece of it. I want to taste it. I want to try it out and see if it works on my body. Most people would be okay 
with that. You're not asking for the whole loaf. You're asking for a piece. And especially if they're your good friend, they're going to understand where you're coming from. And I'm sure they're going to want to support you. So, you know, explore differently. Those different foods, um, vegetables, um, different combinations of foods. So when you find out the singular foods at work, then you can begin to do combinations of foods and see, well, does this work? Does this not overstep the boundaries? Or wait, when I put this together, oh yeah, it's not good. For some people, they can do certain dairy products, but if they put them together, they cannot. Or sometimes it's better if they do put them together, right? It just depends. So you've got to explore this. According to chef and food writer Julia Adams, exploring different cuisines and ingredients can open up a world of possibilities for finding foods that truly nourish your body. You can win the battle when it comes to what you can eat because you are what you eat. And I want you to be absolutely... I, just incredible out there in your everyday. I want you to be able to live the life that God intended. And that means you got to feel good. And that means you've got to eat well. And I know we don't always like that. But in the journey of health, the language of food speaks volumes when your body smiles back at you. Think about that. So is your food smiling back at you? Remember, eating for your body is not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's about listening to your body's cues and honoring its unique needs. So by being mindful, keeping that food journal, and experimenting with different foods, the different combinations, you get to unlock the secret to optimal health and vitality, something you want on your table. So go in peace, be present, be incredible be you. I love you so very much. I cannot wait to see you on the other side. Blessings, hugs, and lots and lots of love. We'll talk to you real soon. Have a glorious blessed day. Bye-bye. Feeling inspired, ready to train for life, and love your journey? Visit createyournow.com for more incredible resources to help you along the way. We'll see you next time on Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie. And remember, always be sure you consult your physician before beginning any health and fitness plan.